Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name's Andrew. Today we're gonna be going over CompTIA Security Plus, good, bad, and different on if it's something that's really necessary to have within this day and age. Now, currently we have CompTIA 601 that is going to be retiring this July and moving into 701, which we'll kind of be going over that toward later in the video. But quickly wanted to just go over, this is literally straight from the CompTIA security page, kind of the what to's, what to know, what to expect. And then I plan to go over a few great tips you need to stay around for on ways that you can study for this certification and pass this with as simple and easy as up to a week and even less of study prep. So let's go ahead and get started. And we're gonna quickly kind of just go over what it means and what it is to have Security Plus. So this is, I'd say, an entry-level basic foundation of cybersecurity skills and something that is still an entry-level certification. This is something that's going to help you kind of learn your terminology, different types of careers that you can kind of lead into cybersecurity when it comes to as a quality assurance analyst, a SOC analyst, information security analyst, and even just like working as an analyst in general within some type of security team. So this is going to teach you a good baseline of cybersecurity skills that you'll need within the industry. It gives most organizations and companies are trying to test into a, hey, look at me. I have the basic fundamental knowledge and understanding of knowing what security things I need to be kind of concerned of that you're also worried about for in your environment. So let's go ahead and go to exam details and kind of see what we should be expecting. So once again, we are still seeing 601, but that's going to be getting retired here at the end of July. And then we'll be moving into the Security Plus 701, which has a little bit more up to date stuff involving cloud and AI. Um, I have not honestly seen or gotten to go into to see any more of the new uh, PBQs or the live lab questions that you need to get into. Um, but good news is there's only a maximum of 90 questions. Uh, the passing score is a 750 out of 900 and you're given 90 minutes to pass the certification. Recommended experience level they're saying is about two years of IT experience uh, to include a CompTIA Network Plus certification. Um, I'll be the first one to tell you, I went and took my Security Plus first before any other certification. I studied probably about a month's worth and I'm gonna drop some applications on the phone, some phone apps that I utilize to study to include uh, Udemy as well, which I've mentioned in many of my videos on some quick, easy videos and classes I was able to pick up to prep. Um, so definitely something that you can easily study for and pass, I'd say on your own without the experience needed. Um, CompTIA has some not too much tricky heads up questions that you should be able to kind of pipe through. Um, it's A, B, C, D. There shouldn't be any multiple choice other than your PBQs or those performance based questions, which you should be only seeing about four of those on the actual test. And those are usually the first four things that if you want to, you can actually skip them and go right to the multiple choice and then come back at the very end of the test and actually go into those if you'd like. So with Security Plus, this does get you DOD 8140 approved, which in, in full retrospect allows you to have a certain level of trust when going into DOD work. And let's pivot back up here real fast of what skills you will learn. So. I know there's about five, possibly six different zones on what CompTIA Security Plus really teaches. So general good security concepts, your security operations, threat vulnerabilities and mitigations, security program management and oversight, and security architecture. So all these things are important. All, like I said, the biggest thing I feel like Security Plus was to me was learning the terminology. You're gonna see lots of terms and stuff that you may never have seen or even knew existed if you're still breaking into cybersecurity. And to really get into this field, one, you're gonna always constantly be learning. And then two, it's also being able to now act upon and learn these uh, things that you'll be kind of learning and training on and how to mitigate, how to alert, how to detect those. And by doing that, hopefully a company, when they see this, will say, okay, awesome. We're looking for this entry level certification uh, that this individual now has, that they can handle and tackle these type of um, alerts and other things that we're going to be seeing. So some jobs that they say you can land with the CompTIA Security Plus, I think they kind of, this is a very far reach, um, but not too far. So like network security operations, working in the NOC, probably so. Cybersecurity, uh, network analyst, once again, you could probably land with that one. Uh, cloud penetration tester, uh, web app pe penetration tester, and penetration tester. 
Um, I hate to tell you, but with Justice Security Plus, unless there is any kind of personal training and understanding and knowledge behind knowing those type of pen test uh, tools and applications and processes, just holding a Security Plus will probably not get you the enough cred and enough uh, leeway on your resume to get into those type of roles. Not saying it can't happen, but I'd say with companies looking for these three specific type of roles, they're looking for at least pen testing um, experience. They're looking for your pen test plus, your GSEC, um, uh, 504 for the GAC with SANS, and even like your CEH for your um, ethical hacker. So, but once again, nothing saying you can never ever try. Now, what happens once you get your Security Plus? So now that you get your Security Plus, outstanding, great. Um, now there comes to the aspect of having to renew. So every three years, you'll be required to submit either CEUs, continued education uh, of learnings, to show that you're either working in a field, constantly still developing those skills. Just like riding a the bike, they wanna make sure, hey, are you still practicing and working on these skills so we know you won't have to kind of retake the certification. Now, if you fail to submit your CEUs in time and you can don't get those submitted, your cert your certification can go in uh, an apt and it'll pretty much expire and you would be required to retake the test. So highly recommend not doing that. Um, simply just attending uh, conferences, going to on um, like Udemy or even LinkedIn Learning and completing certain learning objectives can get you those CEUs that you can then submit onto your portal to keep this renewed. So let's go to purchasing plans. So boom, here we go. Um, it is a somewhat expensive voucher for your test. So you're looking at one test at $404. They have the live online training, which is about $2,500. Highly would recommend not doing it if your work or something's paying for it and you really want to fork out the money and it's not out of your pocket, it's out of your work's pocket. 100% do it if, you're, if your work's paying for it. Um, you have your basic bundle. This gives you your exam voucher, a retake, and self-paced study guide. I still probably wouldn't fork out an extra $181 or 100, 180 bucks to do this. I'd still just be pivoting right here to my exam voucher, um, but to each their own. And once again, if you have a company or any type of maybe school grant or a school that you're involved with that pays for these types of certifications and training, um, if it's grant money and you're, there's no there's no money out of your pocket. Definitely go for the additional in-depth training if you can. I'd say it definitely helps. Um, then your exam prep bundle gives you an exam voucher, a retake, self-paced study guide, and the cert master practice. That cert master practice is a pretty clutch aspect, I think, because one, it gives you examples of those PBQs or your um, lab questions. So definitely something to look into. So. I'm going to drop some more references down below on this video as well. Um, Quizlets, exam topics, two excellent phone apps that you definitely need to download. I'm going to point right up here and I'm going to edit the video to make sure you guys see these. Um, those are great. Those are something you can quickly study on your phone, um, set up quizzes. The Security Plus one through CompTIA should be free. It was on iPhone. The IT certification one, there is a free-ish version of it, but you'll eventually hit a paywall. But with that one, you can, I think it's $20 a month if you want to do it just as a monthly or you can do a year subscription for it. It has CISSP, CASP, Network Plus, A Plus, uh, Security Plus, all the different types of vouchers you can use to study for it as well. I was a huge fan of it and that's what I utilized when I was also studying for this certification. Um, to include, I was working with a few different colleagues that were also taking the certification. So we did study sessions and we made sure that we were kind of all preparing at the same time to ensure that we were getting ourselves ready for this and preparing as best we could for the test. So I've had friends and colleagues also recommend some specific Quizlets. I'd be careful with that just because depending on who's making that Quizlet, you always want to tr trust but verify the questions and answers that they're submitting on that. But this is definitely some stuff that I would recommend even on Udemy, looking up any kind of Dion Learning or any of those free exam, those uh, they're usually going to go on sale every now and then, or especially if you go once in a while and look at them, then you'll get a specialized code. Um, I picked one up for about $10, $15, and then I utilized that. Total time in, I'd say about a week, week and a half, I utilized for studying. I was doing about 15 to 20 minutes a night on my phone, uh, just using those phone applications, doing the tests and practice tests. I was scoring in the high ranges of about 78, 85 percentile range on all my practice tests when I went in and took my my uh, certification. 
Um, I was deployed at the time. I was in Kuwait. So that's where I went into their test proc center. And that's where I took my certification. I passed roughly with about, I want to say like an 810, 820. And best feeling of my life. So definitely go in with confidence. Understand the questions. If you're taking those practice tests and you're scoring in the high 70s, low 80s, you're probably good to go in and pass your certification. Um, take your time. Always read through the questions fully. Don't just assume and do a quick read, then quickly select. But yeah, definitely just read through those. Make sure you're seeing the full question. See what it's asking for. Nine times out of 10 out of those four choices, two will be completely out of the way and you'll be able to make it to like do a 50 50 choice with one question being just maybe a better selection or a better book answer choice. So as always, really appreciate you guys sticking around for this video. If you think it was helpful, go ahead and smash that like, hit the subscribe and then stay tuned for our next video.